Let's watch all the movies. Hello everyone and welcome to Folkmaster's vlog for the Warmer 4000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my first animation review of this vlog. I wasn't entirely certain what to call these type of reviews as it is a part of an anthology series but it's not a TV show as it comes from a streaming platform. Games Workshop has hammered it in that it is animation, hence why I decided to name it that thing. Today I'm reviewing Hammer and Bolter Episode 2, Bound for Greatness. The title of this anthology series is taken from an old magazine they produced around the early 2010s, which features stories from both 40k and fantasy. An interesting choice on Games Workshop side is that all the people who have worked on this animation are anonymous. It's written by a team of people and the reason why is because a couple of years ago the writer Matt Ward, a game developer and writer for Games Workshop, was receiving death threats from idiotic morons who didn't like his written material. I refuse to call these people fans as they don't act like actual fans. I think they adopted a policy of not giving credit to any of the artists working on something in order to protect them and their lives. That is completely messed up and unfortunately a good explanation of how toxic this fandom is sometimes. I feel sad for those who created this as they, they won't get any credit for their creations. Likewise I have no idea who performed in this uh, animation but I do recognize a few voice talents from the other dramas. Now with that huge background dump delivered for this review let's go into the actual review. Also a friendly reminder Games Workshop, this will be a quite nice review to your animation and some good publicity for your streaming service. I would recommend that you do not try to take this video down because I showcased some parts of the animation from it. Because that, that's, what, that's when I'm gonna turn on you and I will not be nice in my reviews henceforward. Let's see what this story is all about. In the great library on the imperial world of Antioch, Adep Nef has only one job, to count the endless books. He is one of hundreds of adepts who count thousands of books under the ever watchful eye of the prefect. In the great processionals and squares outside, imperial preachers read to the gathered masses from the tomes in the library's collection. Nef is diligent in his duty, anxious not to draw the attention of the prefect until one day he discovers a strange new book has appeared in the section of the library. What harm could opening it do? So this takes place on the imperial world of Antioch. It opens up as we see the imperial preachers talk to the masses and spread the imperial creed. The main character is Adep Neff. As previously stated, he counts books all day. While he does so, there are huge vox apparatus that screams out their daily duties. They are only to count. They are forbidden from thinking by themselves. They are forbidden from reading and speaking with others. The voice speaking out is what I believe to be Gareth Armstrong. I really love his voice talent. There shall be no thinking. To reason is to consider lies. There shall be no reading. And I also think Emma Gregory voices one of the preachers. Once again, we are most honored to receive such auspicious guests. Quite so, Prefect. You are blessed indeed to serve the Emperor through our patronage. This episode really hammers down the repetitions of duties and the dangers of straying away from it. One day, another adept named Bowl sits next to him while they eat sludge and says that there is a wrong number of books in the library. Already here it makes you suspicious as he breaks the rules. Neff sees this for himself as he one day finds a new book that doesn't belong there. The moment that he touches the book, he is tempted by sentient demons to read it as knowledge is seductive. He managed to stay off the temptation this time though. Each day the Imperial Preachers arrive there to pick up new volumes of the Imperial Creed. Just this point is a bit weird as I don't know why they need new volumes, but I understand why this is a part of the story though. Our main character seeks out Bowl and tells him about it, who asks in turn if he read the book and where one can find it. 
He reveals the location and later on seeks out the book, but he cannot find it this time around. Neff becomes frightened from this realization and seeks out Abbeball once more, but is found to be breaking the rules and is brought before the prefect. He says that Adep Bowl was the one who said it first, but the prefect denies his whole existence. He is chastised for this and told to return and then you see that the prefect has some bird-like arms, giving away that he is a creature behind his conspiracy. Putting one and one together, you realize this is a sentient corruption scheme. Sench is all about change, hence why each day must be a repetition like no other. Neff cannot stay away from the book, though, and finds it again, this time with a face on it that looks a lot like Bowl. This part of the story is a bit unclear to me, whether Bowl was a part of this sentient scheme to corrupt this planet, or if he was just a noisy adept that got too curious too and was absorbed by the book. Because the prefect is obviously corrupt, so he could have lied about the fact that Bowl never existed. But either way, upon opening the book, he is devoured by demons as he sees the text inside is cleverly changed from the Emperor of Mankind into Changer of Ways. The next day, when preachers arrive, they are given new volumes and as they read them out loud, the corruption of Sench spreads, ending the episode there with the prefect being awfully satisfied with what he did. So what did I think about this episode? So, I wouldn't call myself an animation expert, but I've come to understand that many whom are, are disappointed with the animation being cheap. I can understand some of the criticism, as it is mostly still images with very few movements to them. But me coming from a background where I mostly consume stories in written format or audio dramas, it, this felt like an illustrated audio drama, and for me that was quite enough actually. But keep in mind, I might not have high standards as uh, other animation fans, so please uh, take that with a grain of salt in what you decide for yourself. Like I personally saw a little difference from these too many enemies out there. I think the story was a slow burner in all the good ways. It showcases the repetition of ordinary imperial life and the moment you step away from it is when you fall. I'm not sure if I've said this before, but I know how hard life can be in the 40k universe with all the constant battles and whatnot. When it comes to stories, I want to see other things that, that I don't already know about, filling out the blanks, and I think this story does that quite well. The characterization of our main character is done well with theme of change and knowledge will corrupt. The Imperium is often criticized for being a rough place, but it's unavoidable as the alternative will damn you from the moment that you stray away. I think the voice acting is decent, the art style looks really amazing and I love it. Jonathan Hartman is the only credited single person on the credits and I, he wrote the music and I think it's very atmospheric and it sets the tone right away. I think if it had been a little bit more subtle with the factors behind this, it could have been a far more scarier story. So it's not a perfect episode but I came away from it being quite satisfied. I would give this episode a 9 out of 10 forks. I know some just want to bash this show directly out of the gate from uh, taking away the free animation off from YouTube and not to be a Games Workshop shill, it makes sense that they did that as they had to protect their property. Likewise, the animation wasn't that much of a big problem with this slow burner. A funny thing about this episode is that in the credits all of them ends with a thing that wasn't hurt in this episode and this time around it was no books. But with that said, thank you much for watching this animation review. See you around everybody, bye bye!